Hi everyone, I want to talk today about introductions and that vital per first paragraph of your essays. So we are now moving on to essay number three and I've hopefully given you a bit of feedback on your previous assignments and your essays as to whether your title and your introduction are attention getting. And the reason I stress those is that they are the first thing your reader reads. And we have already talked about how it can be a good strategy to write your introduction after you've written some of your body paragraphs, because oftentimes you don't know what you want to write about until you've written a bit of your, your body paragraph. So after you have an idea of what your draft looks like, kind of the overall organization and structure of it, you can go back and start to work on and then revise your introduction. And again, it is important because it is the first thing your reader reads. And so your, your title and your intro should be uh, attention getting. And you want at the end of your introduction to reveal what your thesis is, remembering that your thesis is the topic that you're writing on and the stance that you are trying to argue or prove throughout the rest of your paper. Usually that introduction has a preview of the main points you'll cover. And so a main point corresponds with each of the body paragraphs that you write. If you need to, you might wanna establish some credibility to write about the topic. This is more important when you get into things like heavily researched papers or persuasive papers. And then by the end of the first paragraph, we should have an idea of what the tone of the piece is. Is this a serious piece, a comical piece, entertainment or information based? So I want to show you a sample of a rough introduction. And I say rough in that this is not what you want your final introduction to look like. So we have topic, junior ice hop, hockey, and body checking. And then this would be a persuasive paper. And so you see that you have an idea of what the structure will look like. And then you have a very overt, explicit statement of the thesis. Again, we want to be a little bit more nuanced when we finalize our introduction, but this is a fine place to start. Some things you want to avoid as you're writing your essay are those announcements such as, in this essay, I will argue or I will show or this essay is about. Those are better used in public speaking. Again, we want to be a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more straightforward when we write our thesis statements. So from the previous example that I showed you, we have, again, the topic. We have organization and preview. Here's how the categories will be laid out, viewpoints of fans, standpoint of Hockey Canada, and the positions of the science community, and then the thesis. So the, the introduction has evolved from that rough draft that we saw a few slides ago, but it's still not super attention getting. If you add something like this, which is a summary of an actual story uh, that happened several years ago as it was reported in the Minneapolis newspaper. So 16 year old Jack Jablonski from Minneapolis was minutes into the second half of his Friday night varsity game when two hockey players from the opposite team slammed into him from behind and pushed him into the rink boards. Jablonski's spine was instantly severed and it appears he may never walk again. Not only does Jablonski have to live with the consequences of a two-second gameplay, but the two opponents who body-checked him have to live with the guilt of accidentally paralyzing a fellow player. So by contextualizing this intro, giving us a story, pulling us in, helping us understand the importance of the topic, we are hopefully going to want to get the reader to read more than we would if we presented them just with this. This here is your in-text citation. This indicates that it's the title of an article and there is no specific author known. Otherwise, the author's name would be here. So imagine that this is my introduction, the first part of my introductory paragraph, and then I go in with, despite tragedies like this, recently Hockey Canada has permitted body checking among players as young as nine. So we're giving it more history, more background. In evaluating these issues, the perspectives fall again here's my organization of my paper and here is the thesis that it should not be allowed for children as young as nine to body check each other in hockey so you get an idea of the again organization of the essay what the argument is what the topic is but we have personalized it or humanized it by adding the story to the beginning 
Remember, your thesis must appear in your introduction, and it usually appears at the very end of your introduction. It is your topic plus your stance on it, and it sets up the rest of the essay. So if I were to write an essay about Love Child, uh, which is a restaurant in downtown La Crosse, Wisconsin, I might say something like, it's got great service in Mediterranean cuisine and an intimate local dining experience, but it comes with a charge. So you know that I'm going to talk about the food, I'm going to talk about the setting, the fact that it's local, but the fact that it's expensive. So again, there's my main points as previewed in my thesis statement. If I were writing a process analysis essay, which is a how-to essay, you might be doing a how-to or demonstration in speech classes that you've taken or will take, uh, you might have a thesis that looks like this. Failure requires true commitment to not do anything, to engage in constant derogatory behavior, and to plagiarize. So that is an essay about how, how to fail college. It's an essay I've given students in this class before as their first essay. So they do a process analysis on some topics like how to succeed in college or how to fail in college. If you struggle with three thesis creation, there are uh, websites out there that can help you. It will ask you what your topic is. It will ask you what your stance on, stance on the issue is, and it will kind of poop out a, a rough uh, thesis statement, and if you really struggle with your thesis statements, that can be a nice place to start. Remember that your introduction is more than one or two sentences. It should, again, pull us in, give us some historical or context if we need it. It should reveal what the topic is and your stance on it as the author. Should probably preview those main points, and we should be able to realize by the end what kind of tone we're going to be walking into with the paper. Uh, and I think that's all the things that I just said, so I'll move on to the, the next slide, which is about options that you can use. So you can start with a story or an anecdote. So you saw me do that with the reference to Jake Jablonski and his hockey accident. And an anecdote might be something that is um, not necessarily an actual story, but it could happen, a hypothetical, if you will. You can startle your audience, whether that's through some kind of statistics that's, that is alarming, um, or a story that is jarring. You can start with a strong quotation, and that again means something that is from a person that the audience might know, or it's a particularly evocative or beautifully worded quote. Uh, you can give some historical background, and we do that in that previous example of hockey by talking a little bit about uh, recent judgments that have been made on Hockey Canada give descriptive detail. I like to do this, especially when I'm writing descriptive or narration, where I use the five senses, touch, taste, sight, smell, and sound to fully immerse the reader in something, have them imagine being somewhere, smelling something, tasting something, so that they're there along with me. You can then also present a contrasting position, ask people to put their minds in one position and then uh, refute that position. So if you struggle with introductions that are attention getting, take a look at those options and maybe try two different versions of your intro, um, doing a free writing section or session, I should say, that allows you to just kind of write without uh, criticism of yourself or without limits and then see which one you like better. So after you've written your title, or excuse me, your intro, it's time to go back and look at your title. Titles are usually something I write at the very end of my paper once I've drafted it and have an idea of what my entire essay is about. I like innovative titles. I have been known to sometimes give extra credit for really good titles, and they are the first thing that your reader reads. Think about when you browse for books or music, looking at the titles of songs or books or magazines or articles. That's the thing that pulls you in. Uh, so you want it to get your reader's attention. You want it to be revelatory of what the topic is in your essay. And again, set the tone. Is this a funny piece or a serious piece? And I like wordplay. I like things that um, make us think or make us kind of tilt our head sideways, if you will. And then look at those titles on the screen. You know, if you were walking down the library and looking at possible uh, books to pick up, which one would you would you be attracted to? You're probably not going to want to read my comparison essay. 
it's it's probably the least exciting of the top title options listed on this page. So think about what appeals to you. Think about how your topic can reveal your your title can reveal your topic, but also pull us in and help us to understand what you might be writing about and what your tone is. So that's a quick overview on intros and titles.